Hey everybody, it's Michael. Uh, I just wanted to make a video for you as we go into our finals weeks here. We're in the last two weeks of the class and actually uh, got about, uh, oh geez, just uh, a little over one week left in actual class time where you're going to be putting together your final project. So this is pretty crazy. We're getting really close to the end. So what should we be thinking about at this critical time? Well, we should be thinking about how to pull all the strands together uh, of what we've worked on over the course of the semester. And how do we do that? Well, we're doing it with something called an annotated bibliography. Now, so you've certainly taken a look through, uh, hopefully, and, and, and seen what the, uh, uh, what the actual requirements are for the annotated bibliography. What an annotated bibliography is, is an exploration of research sources that can be put together uh, in your terminal paper or in any piece of research that you do. And it just shows that you've read the articles you understand them and you have some sort of thought about how useful they are. And what you're doing is you're taking these different articles and you're piecing them together in a way that makes a clear and cohesive argument about the topic that you're trying to study. So your annotated bibliography should start out with an introduction that talks about your topic, what you're studying, why you're studying it, why you think it's important to community development. And then from there you can sort of work it forward and, 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 and begin to take the reader through a road map, this is really important I think, to organize things, give the reader a road map of what you would like them to understand and take away from the annotated bibliography. So you're making an argument, you're saying how you're going to structure these articles, then you actually give us the articles. Well, wait a minute, you've already done that. That was the journal entries you've been doing this entire time. If you haven't figured it out already, you've already done most of your final paper. It's finished already. Isn't that great? Really exciting. So you don't have to really do a whole lot of work. What you need to do is take all of your journal entries from the previous weeks, look through any feedback, fix anything that you know perhaps Yetkin has, has told you or maybe I've told you on occasion, and uh, uh, if there's any feedback there, you could try to improve it, put it all together in one place, then you need to write an introduction and a little bit of an outline about how you're taking the reader, or me in this case, or your reader, uh, through the actual process that you're trying to think through and why these articles really tell you about that process. It's a great research skill to have because as you go through your career, you may be called upon to actually conduct some physical research that involves going through journal articles or books or you know, academic sources or whatnot, and you're going to need to put them together in a cohesive way that makes an argument that people can understand and that says, hey, look, I've really done my research here. I have solid evidence to back this up, or at least a lot of uh, other scholars and scientists who have said that this is, this is the way that they see this particular problem or issue that we're working on. So that's why an annotated bibliography is extremely, uh, uh, extremely good practice for the kinds of research you'll be doing down the road. Now, of course, uh, I'd like to talk about something that we've also encountered throughout the, 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 the course as well. And I, I think this was best exemplified when we were actually doing that, um, if you remember that module where uh, we had the planning meeting and the county commissioners and how challenging that was, right? Um, how difficult it was because development doesn't always go the way that you plan. In theory, we figured that we're just going to bring people together. And let's say you put together an annotated bibliography and you studied a problem and you're going to propose a solution using some of the analytic uh, techniques that we studied in this class. What's really challenging here and what can you bring to the table? Well, I'm hoping that after this class you can bring a couple things to the table. First of all, through your scholarly research, and through your journal entries and annotated bibliography, I hope you're bringing some really good research skills to the table. In fact, I know you are because I've seen you actually produce this work over the course of the semester. So you know what, not only a lot more information than you knew before, but you know where to find it and how to report it properly uh, in a way that's really cogent and uh, will make a really strong argument for the people that you're trying to work with. That's a really good skill and that's worth a lot to people. Um, the second thing, of course, is that you're bringing analysis to the table and saying, hey, you know, now that we have information, I can tell you a little bit about the local population, the environment, the, the 
financial situation, um, growth trends, decline trends, um, what some of the issues are, what the population is going to look like in several years, how that might affect other, uh, other circumstances. And then you can take that information and base it within the context of the research that you've conducted and present a really clear picture. That's another useful thing that you can do. But the third thing might be the most useful of all. As you're bringing all of these skills and techniques to the table, you are also bringing... Oh, look at that. I made the camera move. Ah, there we are. Uh, as you're bringing all this stuff to the table, you're going to have to work with... That's right. People, human beings, human beings who are imperfect, human beings who have real problems and points of view and feelings and emotions. And sometimes in a public, uh, in a public situation or when you're working with um, a corporation or a client or a development agency or a government, whether it's in a public space or not, you're going to come face to face with people's energy their attitudes, their emotion about, and their deep, deeply held beliefs about their community and what it really means. Of course, what do we do in these situations when we confront, uh, sometimes in positive ways and sometimes in negative ways, people's emotions? Of course, we need to be good people people too. And the first thing that you must do, open those ears, listen to what they're saying. It's very, very uh, useful to to, as, you're, as you're listening to individuals, it's really useful to be able to know how to listen, to understand, and then to reply by making that individual feel as though they've been heard and that their input is valuable. And one way you can do that, let's say you have somebody, uh, you're trying to propose a new uh, hydroelectric power plant and somebody is opposed to it because they know it's going to change their community. And they, they don't really know why, but they know it's wrong and it's bad and it's just against everything that they've had to, had to you know, that they've dealt with in their community before. This is where you can use your skill as a community development professional and say, you know, I hear that. I really understand that. I, I can't pretend, as an outsider, I can't pretend to know more about this community than you do. And clearly, you understand the importance of the history and, and way that this community has operated in the past. As we talk about the future, I'd like you to help us understand how we can reach a solution because we have to do something very important here. We have to find a way to get clean power, or better power, or better energy. And we know that this is going to benefit a lot of members of our community. How can we work together to make this more culturally appropriate? Simple twists like that are not tricks. They're people skills. It's understanding how to listen, reiterate that the person has been heard, and know how to deal with that situation, how to organize that information and knowledge into your ongoing analyses. So once you've done your research in the past, that's step one, and you've conducted your analyses, that's step two, when you come back to the community, you're going to be confronted with a variety of reactions. And those reactions can help to revise and strengthen the kind of work that you're doing in these communities. That's step three. That's what makes you a real pro. You, you are the real pro. And you're a real pro because you've got skills, but you've also got people skills. And the biggest people skill that you can possibly have in community development is how to use these things right here. How to listen. How to listen well. Or how to understand. How to perceive. Maybe you're just reading emails. How to understand, how to take that information that comes from the ground and incorporate it in your analysis. This is where your expertise lies. And of course, you're going to think about it in a way now, after this class, hopefully, that is much more holistic and integrated than before. So, you know, instead of, it's, it's almost like um, Eastern medicine in a way, you know, where instead of thinking that we have a problem, let's say, you know, we have an achy joint right here, instead of always constantly trying to treat this wrist and this achy joint, we might understand that the real problem is somewhere else somewhere else in the just like somewhere else in the body you might have problems with your exercise habits or your eating or sleeping habits that might be causing this wrist to be bad it's not the wrist itself communities oftentimes if they have an economic problem we know that because of the interdependency of how uh, how communities operate we know that an economic problem might actually be the result of population change land use change 
and sustainability issues that integrate all three, continuity issues as well. Very, very interesting how that works. But as you go forward, as real professionals in the community development space, be thinking about all three, th three of these things simultaneously and, of course, how they all blend together in an integrated sense. And when I'm talking about sustainability, I'm talking about the continuity, well-being, and health of the community in the long term. Is it sustaining? Is it declining? Is it growing? And can we manage that growth? These are important questions to ask. They're non-confrontational questions to ask. And they're things that we'd like to believe everybody has a pretty genuine interest in, seeing their community be a healthy, thriving place. Now you know how to do it. Now I know you're going to go out there and write some really, really great annotated bibliographies. I can't wait to see them. Um, as always, if you have any questions about it, um, you can contact me via email. I'll get right back to you. And um, that's it. Hopefully I'll see you before the end of class. We'll do one more video. That's all. Best of luck. I hope to hear from you soon. Take care.